My name is Ian Richardson, and uh, these days I'm an independent science education consultant. But uh, two years ago, I was the subject lead advisor at Ofsted for science. I'm sorry I can't be with you at the conference today, but I'm delighted to have the opportunity to uh, talk at you on this occasion about my beliefs uh, and understanding of science education. I think work in science in schools that does not involve practical, practical work is an impoverished form of science education. I have a profound belief that if children are to operate as scientists, they will learn best to be scientists, and that intrinsically has to have them involved in practical work. Really effective practical work cannot suddenly been introduced on a Thursday afternoon. If children have been bored to death by their science teacher for the preceding several weeks, uh, and it happens to be that an Ofsted inspector comes along, <clears throat> the response of bored children to a suddenly exciting environment is quite effervescent, if we put it that way. They respond dramatically and indicate they're not used to working practical, practically. But when you go into schools where practical work is part of the day-by-day -day experience of young people, where they're used to working as scientists, the rate of work, the rate of demonstrable progress in their understanding and learning of science uh, is, is delightful to see. It really is. And you can... I think many of us could tell, working, walking into a new environment, whether children were used to practical work or not. I have vivid memories of a, a lesson, a double lesson, in a North Derbyshire secondary school with Year 8 pupils. <clears throat> the preceding two double lessons, the young people had been researching the impact of acid rain on limestone, they had came up with a hypothesis for their group themselves, they designed the experiment, they carried it out, they'd captured the data, and they had each group had captured the data in tabular form on their laptops for their group. When I arrived, the last group was giving a, a, a PowerPoint presentation of their findings, a very persuasive presentation by a year eight young woman who, when she finished, was invited by the classroom teacher to stay at the front, to use the teacher's laptop, the interactive whiteboard, and he simply said to the rest of the class, as we said last time, let's all put our data up on the screen in turn and have a look at what each, has, each, or each group has found. And the child, the year eight pupil, did that ICT job and put the data on the board. Well, the level of these young people being gripped by what they saw appearing on the whiteboard and applying themselves to it as scientists was magnificent. Straight away, hands were shooting up and they were wanting to talk about anomalous data that they could see and they were comparing it with their own thoughts. And this very rich discussion went on about what factors might have affected different bits of data and throughout the whole session the level of motivation of application of engagement was sky high it really was and the children as they left the room were still talking about it which i think is a very healthy sign one example of poor practice that i saw was uh, with a year seven class of bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, keen young people going into the laboratory and the topic being explored uh, seemed to be, well, it was expressed by the teacher as about um, macerating beetroot. Now, <laughs> the blank expression that came onto the faces of some of the young people would have, from a, an active teacher, elicited some sort of explanatory note. But I'm afraid there wasn't. The teacher issued canary yellow, yellow worksheets that gave them how to bash their beetroot, what to do. It contained vac vocabulary that some of the young people clearly did not understand. And there were gaps in the canary yellow worksheets where the expectation of teacher was that the pupils would put in the keyword required.
My eyes fell upon one particular young year seven girl who really did seem to quite enjoy bashing her beetroot. But when it came to filling in the gaps, she turned to her neighbour to ask what word should go here. And when her neighbour didn't know, she asked teacher. And teacher, without having any dialogue with this uh, student at all, told her the word to put in. And I followed this uh, young girl out of the lesson with a few of her friends and just talked to them briefly about what they'd learned. And while, as I say, she'd clearly enjoyed bashing her beetroot, she didn't retain any scientific understanding of the procedures that had gone through or what conclusions could be drawn from it and why they'd done it. The teacher, sadly, was an NQT who thought she was following instructions, but there had been no dialogue with the head of science as to the real purposes of the exercise and what the outcomes should have been and how she could have helped the young people to get to the outcomes. So, you know, that was practical work, <laughs> but it wasn't good and it was fruitless. <laughs>